Lesson 6.3, day one, is it smart to foul at the end of a game? So for those of you who are basketball fans, you know that sometimes one of the strategies at the end of a close game is to foul. So in the 2005 Conference USA Basketball Tournament, Memphis trailed Louisville by two points. At the buzzer, Memphis's Darius Washington attempted a three-pointer. He missed, but he was fouled and went to the line for then three free throws because it was a three-pointer. Each made free throw is worth one point, and the question is, was it smart to foul? So, what are all the possible ways that the shots could fall? So, you have three, three shots, and you could make all three of them. Make, make, make. And I want you to think of all the other different ways that this could happen. Pause the video and write them down. All right, so option one, of course, was make all three. Option two could be make, make, miss. And there are three different ways that they could make two and miss one. You could also make, miss, make, or miss, make, make, okay? Then you could also make one and miss two. And there are three different orders in which that could happen. And then the final one would be if they missed all three. So Darius Washington was a 72% free throw shooter. Find the probability that Memphis will win, lose, or go into overtime. So they were down by two points. So in order to straight up win, they would have to have all three makes. In order to lose, they would have had to have either three misses, all three miss, or you could have had one point. So one make and two miss. To go into overtime, you would have to have two makes and one miss. So let's go ahead and calculate the probabilities of these situations. So for make, 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 there was a 72% chance he would make any single free throw. So it would be 0.72 times itself three times, which is 0.373. All right, then the three misses, so miss all three, would be the complement of that 72%, so 28%, 28%, 28%, and 28%, which is 0 0.022. Then the one make and two misses, recall that there are actually three ways that that could have happened because of the different orders being important here. So, if you make one, there's a 72% chance you'd make one, and then you'd miss the other two, which would be 28%, 28%. Now, that would be 0 0.056, but there were three ways that that could happen. So three times 0 0.056 is actually a 0.169 chance here because there were three orders in which this could have happened, okay? So finally, overtime would be two makes and one miss, and there were, again, three ways that that outcome could happen, as I just circled above in blue. So two makes would be 0.72 times 0.72, the one miss would be 0.28. And then again, there are three ways that that could have happened. So it'll be 0.3, or I'm sorry, 0.435 would be the probability of overtime. All right, so on the next page, let's go ahead and summarize these probabilities we just calculated. So when the game was 73 to 75 and three shots remained, the probability that Memphis would win was 0.373. The probability that Memphis would lose would be the sum of the 20 or 2.2% 
and the 16.9%, so we'll add those up to be 0.191, okay? And then over time, of course, we did just calculate. That would mean two makes and one miss in any of those three orders, so 43.5%. So let's say they make that first shot, and now it's 75 to 74 with two shots remaining. So the probability that Memphis wins at this point would be make, make. They'd still have to make all three, right? And so that would just be that 0.72 squared, which is 0.5184. However, if they were at 74 to 75 and they had two more shots to make, they'd have to miss both to lose. And so that would be the 28% chance of missing squared, which would be pretty low, only about 0 0.0789, about 8% chance. So then the probability of overtime could be any combination of making or missing the last two shots so there are two ways that could happen where they make one and miss the other, which would be about 40%, 40.32% chance on that one. So then it does just so happen that they did not make that next one and it was 75 to 74. So because of that in the game, um, their probability of winning flipped to zero because even if they made that one, their score could not increase to beat 75, okay? So it was just zero. In order to lose, they would basically just not make that last one. They would miss it, right? And so there was a 28% of missing that last one. And then the probability of overtime, if they scored one more, they would have had 75, which was a 72% chance. All right, so now the question is, Washington was a 40% three-point shooter. Do you think Louisville was smart to foul? Why or why not? So if you think about it, um, that three-point shot, he had a 40% chance of getting. So uh, Washington had a 40% chance of winning with that three-pointer, but only... A 37.3%, which I'm getting from right up here once they fouled, right? Chance of winning with that foul. So, in terms of straight up winning, they should have let him take the free throw shot. However, because Memphis, however... The overtime probability increased a lot, right? It was about um, 43%, which we, sh we would definitely argue, you know, could be worse so I suppose you could argue this one both ways um, I would probably say that you know generally speaking it was not necessarily smart to foul because again by fouling you increase the chances that the game continues into overtime and there's not really a huge difference between being a 40 percent and a 37.3 percent chance but in that very moment they may not have been worrying about all those little numbers and in the end Louisville did win and Memphis did lose the game unfortunately so here we go let's talk about what was this binomial random variable all about? And and we were trying to do these calculations and, and what did it all mean, right? So this was an example of a binomial probability setting, okay? 
And we are gonna spend a few days on this idea of binomial probability, because it is, the hardest thing about it is often just identifying that we're looking at a binomial probability, okay? So, there are four conditions that need to be met in order to calculate a binomial probability situation. The outcomes have to be binary, so it's only two particular types of outcome, success or failure. Then each trial needs to be independent of previous trials. So his free throw percent should not change as he takes another shot, okay? So that means that each of his shots should have been independent of previous. The number of shots that he was going to take was fixed. So we knew he was gonna get three free throws in advance. And then success probability has to be the same in each trial. So the probability of success is not changing. So I can't say like, uh, you know, of doing a two point shot from anywhere on the court because theoretically his probability of shooting a two pointer from different locations will be different, okay? So here is the formula that is on your formula sheet. Okay, so if you wanna grab it and look at it, you should be able to see that that formula sheet does have this formula on it. And it looks a little weird and complicated, but it breaks down to three parts. This is called N choose K. It is the number of ways you can get K successes in N trials. Then you multiply your success probability to the number of successes and you're gonna multiply that by the complement of that probability, which would be the failure probability, to the number of failures, okay? So in your calculator, in order to calculate N choose K or N choose K, as it is occasionally written in the, um, on different formula sheets, you might see it this way as well. So it's not a fraction. Don't ever write that as a fraction. It's just another way of writing n choose k. Um, you are going to go to math, probability, and then it's option three there, and it says n c r. Because why not use a totally different variable, right? So n c r is the number of combinations that we can form. All right. So let's go ahead and do these last couple of examples in the check for understanding to just kind of apply this new idea. So for each of the following situations, determine whether or not the random variable has a binomial distribution and justify your answer. So I want you to check bins for both of them. And if any of the conditions does not meet, then it's automatically a no. All right, so if you shuffle a deck of cards, turn over the top card, put the card back in the deck, that is replacement, so there will continue to be 52 cards each time. And shuffle again and repeat the process 10 times. Let x equal the number of aces you observe. So binary, yes, either it's an ace or not an ace. Independent, yes, replacement was given in this problem. We were told that this is happening with replacement. Then N is the number of trials is 10. We're good with that, it is set. And S, the probability of success, there are four aces out of 52 each time. So we're good to go on that. So then in part B, choose five students at random from your class. We want y to equal the number who are over six feet tall. So B is met, either you are more than six feet or you're less than or equal to six feet, okay? I, independent. Independent is not implied here and it's not stated that there will be any replacement. No, so 
Um, once we select a student, there are less students left. And one less student in a group, right? So either you select one of the greater than six feet tall students or one of the less than or equal to six feet tall students. So not met. So this one was a no for, so not binomial for B and yes binomial for part A. All right, then in number two, Pedro drives the same route to work Monday through Friday. His route includes one traffic light. According to the local traffic department, there's a 55% chance that the light will be red on any randomly selected workday. Suppose we choose 10 of Pedro's workdays at random and let Y equal the number of times that the light is red. So go ahead and pause the video again, check it, explain why it is binomial. So B binary, yep, because the light's either red or it's not. I independent is true, and that's because it doesn't matter if it was red the previous days that he went through it. Um, previous days have no effect on whether or not the light is red the next day. And then N is 10, so we're randomly selecting those 10 work days. And Y is going to be the number of times the light was red, which was 55%. So probability success, probability of success is the same each time. So we want to find the probability that the light is red on exactly seven days. And so we're saying in seven days out of those 10. So if you think about it, this could happen a bunch of different ways. It could be red seven days in a row, five, six, seven, and then not for the next three. It could be not red for the first three days and then red the next seven days. So you can see this process, if we tried to figure out how many different orders there were by hand, that would take a really long time. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna let my calculator do the work here on that, okay? So please practice the notation here with me. It's gonna be probability of x equals seven is equal to, and you can write it as that 10 choose seven times the success probability, so in this case, 55% was the success probability, which would happen on those seven days, times the probability that the light's not red, so 45%, so all I did was I found one minus the 0.55 here, and then if it's going to be red on seven days, then the other three days, it is not red. So that um, n minus k is just gonna be three, 10 minus seven. So again, in my calculator, I do that 10 to seven. So again, I'll do math, probability, and I'll choose option three, n, c, r. And um, if you have the subscripts, just put a 10, choose seven. You may have to type in the 10 first and then go through the procedure and then put the seven afterward, depending on the version of your calculator, how new or old it is. So it ends up being 120 different ways that could happen. And so then I'll do that times 0.55 to the seventh, times 0.45 to the third, and I get a probability here of 0.166. Four. So there is a 16.64% chance that the light will be red on exactly seven days. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.